This episode on Sailing for Power, we make the most of the strict Sydney lockdowns. Your reward for finishing one job is another job. Have you had that moment yet, Michael? What moment? The moment where you go, what, what the hell have I done? <laughs> and of course, we have a couple of emergency jobs pop up too. Oh, we've come down here, we're checking them, and today they've leaked everywhere and we're just like freaking out. Jess wants to remove the carpet and just seeing what it looks like under there. Just, just do it. Oh, <laughs> I've been wanting to do it for two years. I have wanted to do this for so long. I never thought Michael would be the one to actually suggest it. That is exactly why I didn't want mold. I don't want the carpet here. Mold. Oh, it stinks. Oh, you tore it. Yeah. I ain't gonna let it go back on. I actually messaged the builder of this boat on Facebook to ask them what was lurking beneath the carpet. And they said, carpet? We didn't put any carpet on the roof. He fared it and had it like ready to go because they lived in the tropics. And I wanted to get this off because we're going to do the top end next year. And it's already mouldy. So in the tropics, it would just be nasty. So. Um, yeah, he's like, I didn't put in carpet on, I hate carpet on boats, so I don't know, it looks really good, the roof's smooth, there's nothing, like, no major fairing to be done. There's a few, like, there's a, a um, join there and probably one or two over there as well where the plywood's gone together, but definitely nothing we haven't done, so... We had literally just finished painting the bathroom from last episode, only minutes before Michael decided to rip straight into this job. Your reward for finishing one job. More jobs. It's another job. This is going to be so fun to over your head. Oh, yeah, it, it, this will guarantee be one of the shittest jobs, but one of the most rewarding. Very, very satisfying. I'm really excited. It, it looks pretty good. What do you think, the condition? Yeah, it's fair pretty well. So these jobs are good because they're really like, they're cheap for us to do. Um, it's just a lot of labor, but it's a labor of love. <laughs> so all we'll be doing is like sandpaper. All Jess will be doing. <laughs> all it will be is sandpaper, uh, maybe a little bit of epoxy to bog it. I uh, don't really want to use builder's bog because it's cracked up the front, I think just from the heat. So I think using proper epoxy bog will be better in here because I don't want this to crack because this looks, this is going to be like the main area. So I want it to look nice. And... Or we could just get like a, one of those foam liner things, you know, like a, a yeah. white foam liner and just stick it back on. Yeah, that if it's too hard. Easier. With nothing else to do in lockdown, we decided to go all out and rip off the carpet in the nav station as well. Have you had that moment yet, Michael? What moment? <laughs> the moment where you go, what, what the hell have I done? <laughs> I can see you just sitting here real quietly, oh, <laughs> wishing you'd probably just had that nap. <laughs> just thinking. Everything, everything happens spontaneously with me, so uh, done the fun parts now. I'll just leave Jesse to do the hard work. Uh, we've ripped the carpet off the nav station and the roof. <laughs> it looks like it's still on there in the camera because it's ugly yellow colour. Yes, Death to carpet on boats. Very nice. Where did your motivation come from? Luckily the glue wasn't too gummy and Michael was pretty successful knocking most of it off with 40 grit sandpaper on the orbital. It took us about two days taking turns to sand all the glue off the roof. Looks pretty good. Not bad for like an hour's work. So tiring. <laughs> I bet. That's why I didn't want you to stop today because once you stop you don't want to pick the sander back up. Snapped the whole disc and it's smoking. 
After a quick rundown to Bunnings to replace it, we'll back at it. Pretty good. Not much fairing to do. I can't tell if that's just primer or if that's fair fairing I compound. Have, yeah, I don't know. Because you can't even see like the, the grains of wood in there at all. No. Which is great. But we're pretty happy. It's really only these lines. So we're just using the torch now from the side and also we don't have a cabin light. So that's pretty much all we have to fair. Just two lines from there forward and another one there forward. And that's it. Happy? Yeah, we'll be when it's done. Not regretting pulling it off? I mean, the hardest part's over, I think. Yeah, we've definitely knocked it, knocked it on the head, broken its back, as they you've say. You've done, you, you have, you've done most broken of it. Broken its back, broken my back. <laughs> I actually swapped the sander at Bunny, so I got a three year unconditional, no questions asked warranty. So they gave me a brand new sander and they didn't make the one that we used to have. So they actually upgraded it. Uh, which to was another great. brand as well. To another brand, yeah. Yeah, and the Zeta, and they gave us the a more expensive right, way. Of, which matches all our other tools. That was like when we, we returned the Bosch drill <laughs> that we burnt out. And it was cheaper. And it was cheaper, so they gave us the new drill replaced, and they gave Plus us money, money, dollars. <laughs> money back. <laughs> I have to say, not sponsored by Bonnings, but yeah, they do pretty good. So day three, we're down here, and it's looking pretty good. Pretty smooth. I think we've got most of the glue off now. We might just go around and hit a few patches and uh, probably start fairing. So we're going to use epoxy, Michael. Yep. We're going to epoxy fair these big seams, which I think we probably need to do a little bit more sanding in there to get that glue out. Yeah, See I think that? we just get that glue rid and we paint it in there. And then we'll put the epoxy fair in there overfill it let that set and probably sand it tomorrow and then i think any small patches will just hit with builder's block but for these big cracks i think we've decided we're going to use the epoxy fairy just in case so it doesn't crack with the expanding contracting of the wood and we're going to sand all around the windows we're going to paint we take that hatch this off whole today? section maybe it's going to be sunny tomorrow but we're not going to do this bulkhead because if we do this bulkhead then you sort of have trouble cutting it off to the sides and then if we get to that point we'll be like we're painting the whole boat basically so we're just going to do that front section and that way it gives us like these nice corners to stop painting so if you you know it'd be awkward if we stop painting here but if we do here forward and that way should be pretty good. So anyway, we'll see. We'll probably end up painting the whole boat. We're just gonna redo this hatch that Jess reckons was leaking a little bit. Yes, right there where that mark is. Anyway, so I'm just pulling the frame off and we're gonna butyl tape it. So the beauty of butyl. See should be go. quick. We're hoping for no rot on this one as well. I'm a bit worried about that bit. Well, the only reason why I want to do it is because we want to epoxy fill the gaps in the roof. And while we've got the excess epoxy, we might as well touch this hatch up if we need to. Which, I don't know, we'll see. Using these builder's wedges to separate the hatch from the deck makes light work of what can sometimes be a difficult job. After a quick clean up, Michael gave the perimeter of the window a lick of epoxy and then with the leftover epoxy used it to make some bulk to start fairing the roof. Oh, you're already smashing out the next stage. Yeah, well I had leftover epoxy. We are just waiting for the paint to dry, quite literally. What? Epoxy. Epoxy. Bop. 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 So we're on day four of the cabin top saga. Um, not sure how I'm going to edit this yet. But I've worn the same thing every day, so you won't even notice. But it sort of gets a bit tricky because when you're editing, there's projects all going simultaneously and it gets a bit confusing. So I usually just put them all together. Today we're going to sand back the fill that we put in, all these holes. So it looks quite nice. It's all set. Oh, it's a bit tacky, isn't it? Yeah, everything's still tacky. 
Everything's still tacky. So Michael's just, we just took the window off. We put that back on last night with some glad wrap just to secure the boat and put some bolts through. That's come back off this morning and we're just about to butyl tape and put it back on, but we've noticed it's a bit tacky still, which is weird. Did you put enough hardener in? Yeah. <laughs> so we've got the frame here, we've cleaned it all up and we're going to just finish off the butyl tape. It's so much easier than sick of flexing it in because you can get it out if you stuff it up. What is the butyl tape? Like a amalgamate, amalgamating <laughs> rubberized tape, I would say. It's really easy to work with, mm. moldable, and uh, yeah, it seems to be when you have like a mechanical fixing where you can screw and bolt something, it's really good because you can just compress a butyl. It seems to last decades. Well, they say it lasts forever, but I don't know if that's true. <laughs> we'll see. Who knows? So it's just sticky enough to work with, which is good. And we've just put it in, I've just put four in the corner there, wrap the heads with butyl so the screw doesn't contact the frame and cause similar metal corrosion there. And uh, we'll just put them all in and then tighten them up in sequence. You just got to do opposites so it goes on evenly. But you can see that inner edge has got a nice layer of butyl it's in there. It's showing down here. Yeah, because it's not on properly yet. Oh, okay. But once it's on, it'll be... Uh, that whole roll of butyl tape. It should squeeze out. Still cheaper than one tube of Tef gel. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I thought I should mention the hatch. It is a Nemo offshore. No, it's not a Nemo. Is it a Nemo? <laughs> I'm getting confused. We got we've got two types of hatches on this boat. So this is the Nemo. I think it's a Nemo offshore. Um, so. We got this new seal is from Bunnings. Um, sorry, not Bunnings, uh, Whitworths, uh, <laughs> which is a little bit big. Um, it's not a full proper manufacturer's fit. Um, it's a little bit hard to shut, but I'm hoping that it'll compress over time. I'd love to change this Perspex to at some stage. Um, I emailed a place to get a quote and it was like $500, which is just crazy. But if we could get these made up somewhere for like 100 or 200 dollars, I'd probably do this hatch and the other hatch there because it would just mean that um, we'd have a really good view out. Um, that they're so crazy at the moment. So anyway, we're gonna go pop this on. This hinge attaches to the top of the frame. You acetone it. Yep. Acetoned. <laughs> So we've tightened up the, uh, all the nuts and bolts now. You can see that butyl has just cut, got pushed out. You can hear it popping as, it, as the air bubbles pop, but it's all popped its way around. You can see the excess that we've put around all the uh, bolt heads that have come through there. So it's really just this glorified blue tack. And it's really easy to clean up, just like you would blue tack. You just kind of just pinch and stab like blue tack. Well, been a busy day. Uh, unfortunately, the epoxy that we used to fair the roof on this side anyway didn't go off for some reason. I don't know if the mix was wrong or it was just old. It was the dregs of the bottle. But uh, anyway, we gave it a couple of days and it didn't go off. So it was a bloody nightmare. So as soon as you started sounding it, it just started getting all gummy and, and just balling up. So I spent the whole day today with a little razor blade just scraping off, trying to carefully scrape off the epoxy off the roof. And uh, yeah, so I've sanded it and I've been experimenting. I've just used some builder's bog and uh, it's gone off pretty hard. So hopefully that's good. It will be good to paint over. So I've uh, run out of steam for the day, but I'll tackle it again tomorrow. Just continue sanding and fairing this nice and smooth. And then we'll uh, get a primer on the bottom and go from there.
Another day of bogging and fairing. It's looking pretty good at this stage. Just about to go over the roof with a light and check for big divots and we'll mark those out and bog and fill in the morning if there is anything. Again. It's looking, oh, that's really nice. Yeah. That feels, what did you sand that with last? 150. Ah, okay. It feels really good. It, it's crazy smooth. This is the best way we've found to sort of see like all the ripples on the roof. Shine the light on that again. That big patch. So you sort of see with the shadow um, where those big chunks or funny sanded patches are. Uh, you, haven't, you haven't finished this job yet. It's too early. <laughs> officially, I think, had enough cooked. They just leaked everywhere. Just, yeah, I don't know. What do you but, say, Michael? The the <laughs> the boat's reward for finishing one job? Giving you another one. <laughs> another two. But it's early. We haven't finished the roof yet, but we've been keeping a very close eye on these batteries. They've just been not performing right and I think with winter we didn't get like really a full day's worth of sun and they weren't getting to float which means they're not like fully fully charged and the sulfite crystals on the cells build up if you don't charge them fully and then that actually causes resistance to the charge voltage I believe or charge current which creates heat and heat creates more resistance and then it just vicious cycle it's just been i think it's just got hot and just boiled over but we've just been keeping an eye on them we're getting a bit warm and not charging properly so every time we've come down here we're checking them and today they've leaked everywhere and we're just like freaking out we want to take them out and just get them off the boat we just don't want to be here uh, not be here and something goes wrong and also, I want to see what's under the batteries because I don't know, we don't know how much acid's actually leaked. So it's super, super corrosive, the stuff that comes out, which is why Michael's got the face shield on. And no gloves. And no gloves. <laughs> 29 kilos each. Those batteries? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to chuck some down there now. Stop any more damage to the wood. Right. And prepare our new space for lithium. Yeah, I think they're done. Actually, works better rowing backwards <laughs> because, because the, this, this is, is up higher. We haven't been a massive fan of the Walker Bay. This is the marina's tender. But they are good because they haven't dented our boat. <laughs> We've got, what, 100 kilos of batteries in here at the moment? 110 kilos of batteries. Plus Michael and myself. I'm sitting right on the bow as well. Oh <laughs> How much? 30. Each? Yep. That's insane. Bye-bye, batteries. Is that still heavy? Yeah. Just like that. Far out. <laughs> Do we get every? We should. We should so go for a sale. Join us next episode as we finally get back to painting the saloon roof and decide to paint the entire interior of the boat. 
G'day everyone. G'day guys. Thank you so much for all your support. Uh, we've been overwhelmed with the amount of orders we've got on the merch. Um, yeah, if you haven't already got some, um, head on over to sailingforpower.com to check it out. Also, just wanted to say another huge thank you to all our patrons out yep. there. Uh, your support is amazing. Um, really appreciate it. Thank you and uh, see you on Hopefully the next one. see you next episode.